Hello everyone, I'm going to try to give a more complete explanation of how DAW marker integration works. So here's a live project, and I made this picture of all of the pieces that you should probably understand if you're going to figure out how to use DAW marker integration the most effectively. You have to know what's in this import and export drop-down menu, how archive chapters works, how to reorder chapters using this hamburger menu right here. And these three dots, when you click on that, it opens up this menu to download audio, archive the chapter, or export audio. And you have to know what these green, blue, and orange boxes mean. And once you know those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things, you'll have a really good idea of how DAW marker integration works. And then I will take you through each of the programs where you can move the DAW markers from Positron into your session. Here's the description from the live view. Import, export, the drop-down menu. We won't worry about import right now. And your export DAW markers function right here. And the export format, this is where you say DAW markers. There's the other options. We were looking at DAW markers specifically. And you can choose Pro Tools, Audition, Reaper, Audacity, MIDI markers for Studio One, or Twisted Wave. The MIDI markers for Studio One also work in Reaper. It's just a slightly different format and how you import it in. Pro Tools, the DAW markers are in a PTX file. Audition, it's a CSV. Reaper, it's a differently formatted CSV. Audacity, it's a text file. MIDI markers is the MID. And... I think the Twisted Wave is a CSV as well. I'll have to check in a minute. So when you export your DAW markers, it'll kick out that style of file. And you export them either relative to the start of each chapter and section or relative to the start of the book. It's really important you understand that distinction to get this functioning how you want. So we're going to cancel for a minute. Uh, archive chapters. You'll see that some of these are archived already. Those are the ones that you can now recover. And the ones that you see in your session over here, two, four, six, two, four, five, six, and seven, you'll see that those are the ones that you can still archive. If I brought three back here and said recover, you'll see now that three is over here. So knowing how to work the archive and recover functions is important to get the DAW marker integration working how you want. And it doesn't delete any of these. Archive just means it moves them out of your screen on this proofing page. These little triple line menus are for reordering. So if you're ever working on a multi-narrator project or you have to upload things out of order, all you have to do is drag and drop to move them where you want them. This triple dot menu has three options, download audio, archive chapter, and export chapter. Download audio is an option. The exact file that you uploaded to Positron, you always have access to in this download audio menu. Archive chapter does the same thing as this button up here, but it just references the chapter that you're located next to in this three dot menu. And then export chapter, you can export DAW markers, a proofing report, or a pickup packet just for that chapter. Again, we're going to focus just on the DAW markers. Same options as before. But you'll notice that there's no option to go by chapter or for whole book. That's because exporting the chapter report DAW markers is just for this file. Last few things to look at right here real quick. The status. So when you haven't proofed a chapter at all, it says 25 of 25 open, seven of seven open. That means that there's 25 or seven annotations in that chapter that you haven't looked at and done anything with yet. This example right here, four of 23 open, that means that there are 23 annotations to look at and you've done something with all except for four of them. So four of them are still open for you to look at. All 12 checked means that every annotation that Positron has come up with, you have done something with. Now, since it says zero of nine fixed, that means of these 12 that you checked, 
nine of them you said are pickups that need to be fixed. This next one down, four of 23 are open, zero of 12 are fixed. That means of those 19 that you did something with, 12 of those were pickups. Of the 10 here that you checked, seven of them are pickups. So that's how you get a handle on what these boxes mean. So that's a good introduction behind some of the menu items, the drop down menu items, and the status buttons. Next thing, we'll look into what that all means for DAW marker integration. Now we'll start downloading files and putting them into the different DAWs so you can see what that looks like. The first thing I'm going to do is we're only going to be working with three of these chapters, two, four, and six. Those are the ones that have pickups in them. So I'm going to show you how to archive chapter 06 here using this button. 06, archive. All right. And then I'm going to show you how to archive 07 here. Archive. Now, for the purpose of DAW marker integration, we're going to be working with three files. For Pro Tools, Reaper, and Studio One, we're going to be exporting the DAW markers for the whole book relative to the start of the book, okay? And for Audition and Audacity, we're going to just be exporting the chapter, okay, for Audis Audacity and Audition. And that's where we're going to get started. The last thing we're going to look at is exporting the DAW markers relative to the start of each chapter in a Pro Tools format, just so you can see how the files are arranged. Because with three chapters, exporting the whole book relative to the start of each chapter, it's going to give you three files in a package. So it'll be the same thing as if you downloaded each individual chapter, but in a package. So all of these are just different ways of working toward the same goal of getting your DAW markers to sync up exactly with the session in front of you. The three that we're doing in the whole book in Pro Tools, Reaper, and Studio One, it's these three exact files. So I'm going to download the audio for these three files, and those are the exact three files that I'm going to put into a Pro Tools session, a Reaper session, and a Studio One session. Okay, so take a look at what I've done now here. These are all the files that I downloaded for this tutorial. I downloaded from here, Chapter 2, Wave, Chapter 4, Wave, and Chapter 5, Wave, directly from this drop-down menu. And then I downloaded the single CSV file for Chapter 2, and this is going to be the one for Audition, the single marker file with the text, and that's Audacity, and then the whole book, the whole demo script with pickups noted book, CSV, so that's going to be for Reaper, the PTX for the whole book, that's the Pro Tools one, the MIDI for the whole book, that's Studio One, and then this zip file is when you download the whole book for Pro Tools, but separated by chapter. So when you open up the zip file, it gives you the PTX file for each chapter that's in your book. We're considering these three chapters the whole book. So these are the files that you work with to make DAW integration work. When you're only working with one type of session and you know if it's a single chapter or the whole book, this gets a lot less complicated because you're only because you're only downloading one thing at a time. But this gives you an overview of all of the different options. Starting with a single chapter file in Audacity, 
we have Martin Wilsey's excerpt with Avon, and you file, import, labels, and then the text file. The TXT is the one that goes with Audacity, and you open it up, and it will open up all of your misreads underneath for that single chapter. When you click on the line, it goes right to them. Audacity is a little bit different because usually you start at the end and do your pickups at the end and move forward to keep all these synced up. But with Audacity, you can go to Tracks, Sync Lock, and now all of these markers are actually synced with where they are in the audio. So if you change something here, like if you delete something, for example, it keeps all of these synced up. So in Audacity, you can do your pickups forward or backwards. In Audition, you have a single chapter file open, file, import, markers from file, and here is your single chapter Audition CSV. And it has all of the misreads labeled at the top and over here on the left as well. So you can scan through them by clicking over here, or you can follow the timestamps on the top. There are two ways to do this in Reaper. So you have your three chapters. So this is when we exported the markers for the whole book, which was the three chapters. And you can click on Help, type in Marker, and what you want is the Region Marker Manager. Inside here, you right click, there it is, and import regions or markers, and you can merge or replace depending on what you need. We'll say replace. Here is the CSV for Reaper with the whole book. Let's say open. And then all of your notes and timestamps are here, as well as up at the top. The other way to do it is to find your MIDI file that you downloaded for Studio One and drag that onto the screen. Make sure to pull it to the beginning. Import 30 markers. And I don't believe you have to import the tempo map if you're still on the default 120 BPM. If you've changed the 120 BPM, I think you are supposed to import the MIDI tempo map to make sure it syncs. This way you get another MIDI track, but you can delete it. But all of those are now located up at the top as well. So those are the two different ways to do it in Reaper. Studio One is a little bit different when it comes to the integration because of how it deals with MIDI files, but this is the easiest way to make it work. You open an existing file, and what you're going to open is the Positron Markers, the MIDI file, first. So you're going to open this into an empty track, and you don't have to load General MIDI. And so it will put in here what looks like a blank track. Open up the marker. And to make this a little bit more visible, you can right click that and say, create arranger sections for markers. And then it's a little bit easier to read. Make sure you're zoomed out far enough to see the pickups, because if they don't have any at the beginning, it will look like the marker track isn't working, but you just have to zoom out to see everything. Now, the next step is to add your audio files into this session. So for this, example, the pickups are from chapters two, four, and five, and they're in a row in this sequence. And so what you do is drag them over and then hit the command key to put them all in a line. So you hit command and it puts them all in a line. And there you have your markers and your arranger and your files right underneath. So that's the best way to use DAW marker integration inside of Studio One.
And last on our list is Pro Tools, because Pro Tools is always a little weird too. So you have your three tracks in this case that we're getting the DAW markers for. And in Pro Tools, what you get to do is take this PTX Positron marker file and drag it and drop it right on top of this session. And it will open up a pop-up that looks like this. Make sure to click markers in memory location. Make sure import replace existing playlists is clicked. And then change this to maintain relative timecode values. If you leave it as maintain absolute timecode values, all of the markers will move over by 60 minutes. I'm not totally sure why, but that's why you have to change that over to relative timecode values. And then when you hit OK, they'll all show up on top, and they will all show up in your memory locations window. And if you double click any of them, you'll get further info inside of the comment box. So that should be everything as far as DAW marker integration goes. We're constantly updating this process, but this is the crux of the idea on most of the DAWs that we support in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.